In this video, we're going to have a look at how this quick measure suggestions feature can help you write your DAX measures in Power BI. We're going to go through some of the example questions that you can ask it, and also some considerations that you need to think about if you want to use this feature. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So quick measure suggestions is an AI powered feature that was released uh, last year. And it's a really powerful tool that allows you to answer questions in your Power BI reports using natural language, similar to the Q and A feature. The difference is instead of giving you visuals and charts that visualizes your data, it instead generates a DAX measures that you can use within your reports. There's another feature, quick measures, which is not quite the same as this one. And I did cover it in the past video, but it's a little bit different in this case because this one is using AI to generate your DAX calculations, whereas the previous iteration of the quick measures allows you to choose from pre-selected a number of measures to choose from, as well as letting you or making you assign the fields yourselves for these uh, calculations. However, that previous iteration that I'm talking about, uh, it's not something that I ended up using just because I preferred to write my own uh, calculations and measures. And also a lot of its time intelligence calculations depend on your dates columns using the auto dates time feature, which I typically recommend turning off as part of best practices in Power BI. So this new feature is a lot more intuitive than the previous one because it allows you to ask your questions obviously in natural language. And based on your question and the wording that you write within your question, it will try to generate an answer or a few suggestions of an answer based on your data model. So let me show you. So here I've pre-created a report uh, to use today. It's the typical data set that we use, the Northwind data set, which is a company that sells goods internationally. We have a few tables that I've imported. Um, it's not too important and they all have sort of relationships between each other. So the orders that were made, the different products within those orders, the categories of those products, our employees, our customer information, and as well as when those orders were made, which is linked to a calendar table. And the only other thing that I've added is this sales calculation, which is a column that just calculates the total sales from our orders based on the quantity and unit price of those different orders. So the first thing that you need to know is if you want to use the quick measure suggestions feature is you need to enable it in a few different places. So the first place is under your preview settings. So under the options here, you will need to go to I believe report preview settings and you will see and you will need to make sure that quick measure suggestions is ticked here. If it's not, you'll need to tick it and then you'll need to restart your Power BI desktop for this to work. Once you've restarted your Power BI desktop, you will be able to access quick measure suggestions through this, this ribbon selection here, quick measures. So if you click here, suggestions for you might be grayed out and that's because you need to make sure that it's also enabled within the tenant settings. So if you live outside of the US, this is a requirement. Um, and it's disabled by default. So let me show you where to find it. So if you are a tenant admin, you'll need to go to settings and then under admin portal, you will need to look for tenant settings. And if you just scroll to the very bottom, you'll find this uh, quick measure suggestions. You will need to make sure that this option allow user data to leave their geography to be enabled. And this is because the data center, which holds the machine learning model where you send the information to the natural language question is processed within the US. Um, so if your tenant is hosted outside of the US, you need to explicitly enable this feature here in the admin portal. A good consideration to think about uh, here and we're going to talk about it in more detail later is if you're working with sensitive data you might want to sort of think twice before you uh, use this feature so anyway once you've enabled all of those within your settings your suggestions section here should be you should be able to to toggle to it now from here as you can see you can ask uh, different questions here in natural language so it gives you a few examples here and uh, maybe what we can do is we can start with something simple so the first type of questions that you can ask within your data is uh, aggregation type questions so let's say we want to just get the total sales so if you just type total sales here 
you'll see that uh, IntelliSense also works here. So it gives you some suggestions on what type of questions the machine learning might understand. You're free to select those or not if you want to, if you don't want to. And once you're happy with your questions, you just simply hit generate. So what it will do is it will give you suggested measures here at the bottom. So at the moment, it's just giving us one. Um, but if your questions are ambiguous, it might give you uh, different options to choose from. What it will do is it will give you the preview of the results of your of, of the measure as well as the DAX. So how the, that uh, the DAX is written. If you like the measure that it's generated, you simply just hit add and you will see that it will just add that measure for us. So you can rename this total sales and you'll see that it aggregated, it created an aggregate function sum to sum up our total sales, which if you now drag into your, your table or your, uh, your page here, in the card, you'll see that it just gives us the total sales of all of our sales within our data. If you want to add a bit more filter within your, your DAX, let's say you want to just get the total sales by beverage, for example, you can add that within this natural uh, language question. So let's say total sales by uh, beverages. So you will see it, uh, it understands what beverages is. So I'm just gonna hit generate here and let's see if, um, if it generates the correct uh, value for us. So, so here is not really what we want because you can see here it, it says average as opposed to just giving us total sales, which is not really what we want. And it's actually also using our measure that we've created total sales here, which we actually don't want. So, um, we're going to touch back into this um, issue later on. But it's one consideration to think about is that suggestions are not always correct. So you need to be careful and you need to understand DAX and don't fully rely on the suggestions that it gives you. So let's try to give it a different prompt. So let's say some of sales of beverages like this. Let's see what it generates us. So here we go. So this looks much better. So what it does is it gets the sum of sales like we expect, and then it adds a filter to just give us beverages. So 286,000 pounds, if I hover over beverages here, is the same value. And that's how you would use this, uh, the suggested features. You can string up multiple filter or optional filters within your questions as well. Um, so let's say, for example, you want to get the sum of sales of both beverages and dairy products, which are the, the two highest selling categories uh, within our data set. Uh, we're just going to say sum of sales of beverages and dairy products something like this and we hit generate here and you'll see that it adds those two filters the or filter for both beverages and dairy products so it adds up both this value and this value to return 537,000 which is what we expect so while you can write math calculations directly into a DAX measure you can also ask those questions here in the quick measure suggestions so at the moment we already have this uh, sales DAX calculated column which multiplies the quantity by unit price um, but let's say we didn't have that and we wanted to create a measure for that. Let's see how we can create that same DAX in a measure. So I'm going to do quantity multiplied by unit price. Generate. And you will see that it will just give us the, the value or the quantity multiplied by unit price total, which uh, if we put into a row context, if we put it order by order, it will just give us those total sales that we want. You can try to get a little bit more fancy and add a bit more complexity in this calculation. So at the moment here, we don't have, uh, let's say we want to average out the, the total sales across all of our different orders. So uh, what we might want to do in this case, uh, let's add for each row, calculate quantity multiplied by unit price, and then average. So if we hit generate here, let's see what the DAX will come up with. So here, here we go. So this is what I would expect. And this is what I would do as well. So use an iterator average x to iterate through row by row within the order details and the expression quantity multiplied unit price is there. So this is what I would expect to do myself. You can also do things like if and else statements here in your measures. Although if you're using if and else statements as a kind of filter context, you might want to do it as a calculated column. But nevertheless, you can do it here. So let me show you, uh, let's say if 
unit price is greater than, let's say, 10, uh, then give me expensive, else give me cheap. So if I hit generate here, so you will see that it will create an if and else statement for us. And we didn't even have to write this. We just asked the question and it creates that logic for us. Now you can do a bunch of text related queries within the suggestions. Uh, like for example, and I recently created a video around last refresh dates. And let's say I just want to get the current date today. And I, wanna, I want to put it in a string where it says last refresh date space the current date today. Uh, we can do that by writing a uh, last refresh date. I'm going to wrap it with double quotes. I'm going to say today's date. Something like this. And if I hit generate, you will see that um, it gives us and this is what I would expect as well. Last refresh date as a string and then today, today's date as the bit at the end. You can also use and ask it top n values from your from your data set. So for example, we want to get uh, top three categories by sales. Let's see if uh, the suggestions will understand what we mean. So you can see here it gives us a concatenated list of the top three categories based on their total sales. So and, and you can see it even created a, a concatenation to add a comma in between these. So it's 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 pretty intuitive to be completely honest with you. And lastly, the other one that I found is you can ask it sort of time intelligence questions. So quarter and quarter, year and year, um, you can do things like uh, total sales in the last uh, six months. Maybe it will try to use my total sales. So sum of sales in the last six months, if we hit generate, it will create the sort of measure that we need for this sum of so I think this yeah, this first one, I don't think is correct. But the second one is is it looks like this is what we need. And those were some of the example questions that you can ask in the quick measure suggestions to get the right DAX calculations that you want to use within your Power BI. There are lots more that you can do with this feature. And uh, there is a full blog post covering all the different types of questions that you can ask. So if you're interested in anything else that uh, you can ask or you, you would like to ask and see if it's possible, I'll leave a link to the blog post in the description box below. A few considerations to bear in mind if you're thinking about using this feature. Feature. First is that this doesn't replace your need to learn how DAX works. Think of it as something to speed up your DAX or writing a DAX process as opposed to replacing the knowledge of how to write one altogether. So while it's a useful tool for beginners and it lets you write complex DAX quite easily and without having to write anything at all, you still need to learn how the functions and the calculations work. And that's because these suggestions features, as we saw today, don't always return the right results that you might need because you ask your questions in natural language. It might not use or map to the right fields that you want within your data set. And ultimately, it might not even generate the most efficient DAX measure, a DAX calculation that you want to use in your reports. So while this tool is useful, it's still your responsibility as a report developer to ensure that you know what your calculations are doing and that it's returning the results that you want. Another thing to consider, and it's something that I already covered at the very beginning of this video, is that that the model that you are sending your data to is an external model within the US data centers. So that means that if you're handling any personal or sensitive information, I would suggest not to use this feature especially um, if you live in the UK or EU, where the GDPR laws are quite strict about how you handle sort of personal data. And anyway, if you are based outside of the US, you have to enable this within your tenant settings. So if you are if you're not sure, probably will be disabled unless your tenant admin proves it. And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with the quick measure suggestions in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.